Okay, today's lesson, we're going to be thinking about urbanisation. The objectives for today, uh, we're going to be thinking why settlements grow, and then we're going to be evaluating the effectiveness of the Burgess model uh, on the City of London. So the first question I want you to think about is what does urban mean? What is an urban area? You just write some answers down there, that would be great. When you've done that, why don't you think, why do urban areas grow? Why do towns, cities grow larger, as in space, so they expand? You can jot three reasons down and then we'll have a little chat about them. Next one, I want you to watch this video. This video explains the Burgess model and it explains the Hoyt model of how towns and cities are formed. Now these are just models. They're not um, fact, they're not truth. It's just a way of suggesting how cities can grow and the different types of housing and areas you find within towns and cities. So the Burgess model that you saw there um, was developed by a sociologist in 1923 on the city of Chicago. Burgess suggested that there were four concentric rings of different land uses around the central business district. That's where the main shops and town centre is. Although the model was originally based on American cities, it has been adapted for use in British cities. Some geographers argue that it does not work on cities outside of the UK, and we're going to think about whether it works in Luton or not. So the Burgess model has these areas. So the central business district's in the middle, and that's where the main towns, shops, centres are. Then you've got a zone of transition, that's where you might find more residential and commercial industries together. You might also get a little bit of um, uh, factories and things there. Inner suburbs, they were initially the zone of working class houses. That would be where your people that lived in those, that worked in those factories would have lived in that area. So the, um, and that's where you tend to get very small terraced housing. As you move out, You've got inner suburbs, um, sorry, outer, outer suburbs. You get a better class of, of housing there. That might be where you find semi-detached houses, where you've got two houses connected together, slightly larger houses than you would find in the inner suburbs, people with a little bit more money. And then the further you head out, the larger the houses get. So you get to the commuter zone or the, or the far outer suburbs where you might end up with houses that are detached houses and larger and they end up in the fifth circle. So your next task, I'd like you to match up, match the zone to the correct two items of information for a British city. So with your pen, just draw a line, go from CBD, which ones which information matches which zone. Okay, then just some little questions that are gonna flow. Where would this type of housing be found in the Burgess model and why? You can write your answer down. Where would this type of model housing be found in the Burgess model and why? Where would this type of housing be found in the Burgess model and why? And where would this type of housing be found in the Burgess model and why? Now, I want you to spend a few minutes looking at the satellite image of Luton. And I want you to zoom right in into the different areas. Can you identify the different zones of the Burgess model? You might want to pull the little man so you can see its street view, see what the type of housing is in each area. See if you can identify each area. Does Luton conform to the Burgess model? Is it a nice circular shape? Once you've done that, I want you to draw on here. Where is the CBD of Luton? Where are the inner suburbs? Draw it on. Where's the transition zone? Or can you identify any areas that are the transition zone? And then where are the outer suburbs? Draw it on. And then this is the big question. Do you think the Burgess model 
accurately represents Luton. Can you write me an answer and explain why? And then just to finish off, I want you to pretend your, class, your friend was absent from the class today. If you had to explain to them one thing about this lesson today, the most important thing, what would you say? Okay, thank you very much.